नाना शास्त्र विचारे करने पनो सहधर्म समसापको लोकानामित कारिनो त्रिभुवने महान्यो शरण्याकरो राधा कृष्ण पदार विंद्र वजना नंदे नमतालीकयो वंदे रूप सनातनो रघुजो श्री जीव गोपालको वंदे रूप सनातनो रघुजो श्री जीव गोपालको हरे कृष्णा सो थैंक यू ऑल फॉर जॉइनिंग इन फॉर द अनदर सेशन ऑफ दिस भक्ति रसामित सिंधु और नेक्टर ऑफ डिवोशन सो हियर वी आर एडिंग आल्सो द श्लोकाश दैट आर पार्ट ऑफ दिस योर भक्ति शास्त्री सिलेबस आई विल इंट्रोड्यूस द श्लोका समबडी हैड आस्क लास्ट टाइम विल जस्ट रिसाइट वंस और ट्वाइस and i hope all of you will become familiar with this so these are the four shlokas as part of your syllabus everyone please recite behind anya bilashita shunyam gyana karma dina vratam anukulyena krishnahanu शीलनम भक्तिरुत्तम सर्वपादी निर्मुक्त तत्पर निर्मल तत्पर निर्मल ऋषिकेनाषिकेशिकेनाषिकेश सेवन भक्तिरुच्यते सेवन भक्तिरुच्यते अथ श्रीकृष्णनादी अथ श्रीकृष्णनादी ना भवेद ग्रह्यमिंद्रिये ना भवेद ग्रह्यमिंद्रिये सेवन मुखे ही जिवाद सेवन मुखे ही जिवाद स्वयं एवा स्पृति अदह स्वयं एवा स्पृति अदह अनासक्त से विषया अनासक्त से विषया यताहारम उपयुक्त निर्बंध कृष्ण संबंधे निर्बंध कृष्ण संबंधे युक्त वैराग्य मुच्यते युक्त वैराग्य मुच्यते सो इट इज नीडलेस फॉर मी टू से दिस वन टाइम हाउ टू मेमोराइज श्लोकस आई एम प्रेटिश वी वुड हैव डिस्कस द सब्जेक्ट मैटर बिफोर बट जस्ट अवर मेथडोलॉजी ऑफ मेमोराइजिंग श्लोका इज रिपिटेशन we repeat and we become familiar and like that uh, we memorize shlokas uh, sometimes adults grown up people find it difficult because their ability to recall is not so sharp anymore kids can very easily pick it up after just reciting four five times so for adults to memorize shloka what they can do is read the word to word understand its meaning paraphrase its meaning in their own word and then they can memorize seeing that how the first line is connected to the second to the third and the fourth when you have the whole story connected like this then it helps you to recall uh so just some quick clues about it all right uh this is the fifth uh session or the fifth lesson on this series of bhakti rasam at sindhu we are on the chapter 1 let's take a look what is the chapter 1 lashi talks about it talks about the six characteristics of pure devotional service Ah, uh, presentation, please. Klesha agni shubhada, moksha lagu ta krisudar lava, sandara ananda vishesha atma, Sri Krishna kashni chasa. So last time we saw this particular shloka. There are six characteristics are mentioned. So we discuss what are the six characteristics. Of course, how the discussion is pending. We'll continue that discussion today. Largely, we discussed about klesha agni, how bhakti destroys all klesha. Klesha means suffering. 
there are many different remedial measures given in vedic sciences such as performing sacrifices doing charity uh yagya etc etc or tapas tapasya penance or austerity so it may help us get rid of some of the reactions but the root cause of suffering is ignorance as shri rupa goswami established this point in the subject matter uh what is ignorance ignorance is misidentification or misunderstanding of who i am ignorance of the true self i am a spiritual and because of uh that misunderstanding we identify with the material body and being identifying with the material body i am this body then we identify with the needs of the body and therefore we develop material desires this material desires are the thing and this material desires uh um, results into performing sinful actions so bhakti not only helps us get rid of the reactions which we have accrued because of past sinful actions but it also uproots or destroys the root of sinful action and that is material desires and ultimately ignorance that was a subject matter of kleshagni what are the stages of kleshagni when you perform sinful action it leads to aprarabdh aprarabdh leads to two types of action prarabdh which means the suffering that you are undergoing today and dusra aprarabdh leads to uh, you know the propensity inkly uh, yeah proclivity to further commit those sinful actions uh, that is a general proclivity and then it becomes specific it is called as bijam seed and that seed fructifies into a sinful action again and that's called as cycle of sin so four kinds of effects of sin etc were discussed so prarabdh which means you're undergoing so when you perform sinful action when a person performs sinful action so the reaction for it may come in future or sometimes may happen now also but one immediate reaction that happens uh, after performing a sinful action is proclivity to perform it again so this was a subject matter and uh, we also discussed in this why does devotee still sometimes undergo suffering when he is already practicing uh, devotee so by his practice of bhakti he should the klesha agni he must have crossed he should not have that so we discussed about it why he still has it and one other aspect was how krishna consciousness movement performs the highest welfare activity so this was some of the subject matter that we discussed last time so here is a quick question for all of you so while we were talking about klesha agni uh the cycle of sin we said uh any sinful action results into proclivity to do it again now this life itself is a result of our past sinful actions we are undergoing prarabdha the body is actually a suffering is prarabdha so because of the past sinful actions we would have developed proclivity to do sinful actions in this lifetime now how do you counteract uh, those desires which stems within us time and again maybe not regularly whatever whatever the frequency how do we counteract that how do we deal with those sinful reactions sinful desires what was the solution given in bhakti rasam sindhu by shila rupa goswami hari krishna um you know we are undergoing prarabdha and you know the mind still carries the desires uh bhakti definitely approves but what at times if a desire stems within us again what is the solution what do we do take a bead and chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare good solution no doubt about it what else what else what is the way of overcoming that why can't pati pro i'll take the last answer from you okay okay let's hear from others on this first <laughs> uh okay mother oh, sorry mother kuntal karam um, uh, uh, you know kuntal prabhu and mother go ahead yeah mother shama vallabhi so uh, prabhu ji hearing and association of devotees well what did rupa goswami mentioned this is one of the answer for that i'm just checking how attentive you were or did you hear the recording if in case you missed it i would say this was the key point and i cannot emphasize how vital how important it is uh at least i can say for myself as a practicing sadhaka and it is one of the foundational principles of 
Upadesham Vita. Not only Upadesham Vita. If I give further clue, then you will get it. <laughs> Even of Bhagavad Gita. Even of Bhagavad Gita. Even of Bhagavad Gita. What's the answer? So if you don't have the answer, which means you're not struggling with material desires. You're beyond it, therefore you didn't capture it. If in case you were struggling with material desires, you would have immediately caught it and understood, yes, this is a solution that I need to apply. All right, Mother Kamalika got it. Tolerate. The answer is tolerate. Ussahan nishaya dhairyat. That is Upadesha Amrita. That's of you know the part of the first three good qualities to be cultivated. You know, Sar Nishyadharya Tattat Karma Pavatanat Sangatyaga Satovriti. Of course, Sadhu Sangha, all that hearing chanting is fine. Tolerance. And how does Krishna begins his first instruction in Bhagavad Gita? Matra Sparshastu Kantya. Have you ever wondered? I have so much thought on this. Among anything and everything, you know, Krishna in that section is talking about you're not the body but spiritual. Why would Krishna suddenly bring this Mata Spasha Sukantya Shitoshna Sukadukada Agama Paino Nitya Tamta Sekshobharata? The focal point of that discussion is not body but spiritual. And regarding the tolerance, Krishna has spoken later on also. Sukhe Dukhe Same Kritva Laba Labo Jaya Jaya. Many verses are there in different chapters. And then he brings this right in the beginning. Tam Sitikshva Bharata. Tolerate. What tolerates? You know, not only the external, one of the things to tolerate is our own urges. And how do we tolerate? That was the second part of the discussion. Okay, tolerate. But how do we tolerate now? Hare Krishna. This was the most important part of the discussions. So tolerate. Okay, but how do we tolerate now? Can anyone tolerate? No, cannot be. Mother Chintamani, her health is not good, so that's okay. You can go ahead and speak. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanavad Pranam. Yes, volume please. By uh, saying no to the temptations that come. Saying no is at time such a big no. Becomes very difficult. <laughs> How do we tolerate? Saying no is a correct way. But saying no itself becomes very difficult. How do we tolerate? Or I can put it other way around. It's just paraphrasing the question. How do we cultivate tolerance? Because that is what Krishna is saying. Tam Satsikshva Bharata, when Krishna says there, is actually indicating to cultivate tolerance. How do we cultivate tolerance? Vakun Pati Prabhu? Yeah, you can go ahead. Huh? <laughs> I just wanted to hear from others. That's the reason I put you on hold. <laughs> go ahead. I knew the answer for the first question. No, the second question is a googly for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not okay. to tolerate anyway, I will try. What, what yes, yes, please go ahead. Please so, go ahead. Uh, like more. you know, the urges are there. The urges are there, and if, even if the urges are there, I mean, am I audible? Yes, yes. Probably go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So the urges will always be there, and uh, you know, we we'll have to tolerate it, and then afterwards, if the urges are become more and more, we have to really learn to, you know, bear with it and not give in to the temptations. How do we do that? That's the point. What helps us to determine it? That determination. How do we cultivate determination? Huh? How to? How do we cultivate determination? <laughs> yeah, the determination comes once you start saying no, no, no. And how do we start saying no? How do we start saying no? You know, you said last, like the example you gave. We were all having tea, coffee, or onion, garlic, etc. But gradually we stopped eating it, and when the urges came, we were saying no, not this step, not this step. Like that, as we go on, went on saying, the determination built up in us. So, and then with that built up determination, we are able to. Correct, say, correct, to totally correct. The point here is there are certain urges which are very easy to give away, but there are certain urges which keeps on haunting are us different. for a long, long period of time. So I kind of took yeah. a discussion about the whole subject matter. What you're saying is correct. Some basic urges can be very easily given up. We don't even look at it. When we look at it, we become completely disgusted, agreed upon it. But there are certain urges which keeps us haunting us for a long period of time. Sometimes they are hidden within us and what you call as a hibernation mode. And after a few years, suddenly it comes out. Yeah. So what is that key principle that can help us 
maintain our determination give us the strength to say no and the answer is our spiritual practice our our attentive chanting of the holy names of the lord while what you were saying our regular hearing and chanting is what gives us the spiritual strength on that spiritual strength we get the ability to say no it is that hearing and chanting that is helping us overcome all those little little urges also it is that spiritual strength it is those practice that gives us spiritual strength by which we cultivate determination so it's about tolerance so tolerance is not a quality of even non devotee giridhari gopinath prabhu if in case you're not able to join class and if you're distracted so kindly keep yourself muted yeah spiritual practice spiritual we uh, what i was saying was about the saying kya kehte hain cultivating tolerance or exhibiting tolerance is actually the quality of devotees therefore it's a very famous statement of prabhupada the greatness of a man is shown by his ability to tolerate the most provoking situations and that ability and the strength comes from our spiritual practice the stronger and the solid spiritual practice will have will be able to tolerate different kinds of provoking situations and as long as we are in the material body we have to continue to tolerate it's not that different different desires not going to manifest eventually when we keep on tolerating for a long long time then those desires don't any more bother to us that was a point of that discussion moving forward going back to the presentation now uh huh. so lesson 4 this was a discussion so let's move forward this was klesha agni relief from material stress we discussed this cycle of sin etc solution for prarabdh i'm skipping this i have added into the presentation all of you can use this it's all ready up on your uh, student dashboard on the website you can refer to this presentation it will help you get the summary and this was the conclusion तायस्ताने गानि पूयन्ते तपुदानावृतादिभिः ना धर्मजं तद्रध्यम् तदपि शांगरी सेवया all the one may utilize the reaction of sinful life through austerity charity vows and other such methods these past activities cannot approve the material desires in one's heart however once serves the lotus feet of the personality of god head he is immediately freed from all such contaminations so conclusion bhakti eradicates all miseries klesha agni has proved that social rupa goswami proves that now the second characteristic klesha agni shubhadha so to the degree of a klesha or to the degree we are free from klesha to that degree the quality of uh, shubhadha manifest Uh, in a devotee's life so according to shilar pragaswami the two characteristics both kleshagni and shubhadha they manifest fully at the stage of nishtha let's see how shubhadha is being defined by shilar pragaswami he writes first canto or what do you want to call it in that way first chapter verse number 27 and he defines what shubhadha means shubhadha means there are four qualities to call it to be all auspicious when we say that a life of a devotee becomes all auspicious there are four qualities to manifest what are those four quality, uh, qualities this is the verse shubhani praninam sarva jagatam manuraktata sat guna sukham niti adini akhyatani manishibihi so shubhani pri prinanam shubhani prinanam so kya kaha gaya hai so sarva jagat so four qualities uh, sarva jagatam prinanam which means compassion for everyone that's the first quality second anuraktata which means it attracts everyone third sad gunaha it means it bestows good qualities yes ya si bhaktir bhagwati akinchana like this okay let me just give you one more example then we'll take it forward compassion for everyone just like nitanand pro giving compassion to jagai mata you know everyone 
there no discrimination shri chaitanya mahaprabhu going to jarikanda forest you know the 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 lion and the deer they are also getting ex- an ecstatic mood and chanting like that and similarly attracts everyone propad gives an example of jarikanda forest past time like that i will give you more example as we discuss ahead sadgunaha bestows all the good qualities example of hippies shila propad giving bhakti to them and they developing all the good qualities uh, becoming highly talented qualified and cultivating all the vaishnava attributes and sukham which means bestows superior happiness so there are three levels of happiness or there are three degrees of happiness one is material happiness uh, derived from sense gratification second level of happiness is from moksha and the third and the highest level of happiness is from once development of relationship with the supreme lord through prema bhakti all right so let's take a look at the subject matter but before that i would like all of you to little bit uh identify where we are reading it from the book otherwise you might get a little confused so what happens when propad gives the explanation of all this now so propad has not have given headings for all these points like what we are discussing so when you read it becomes a little difficult so i'm just going to help you out with that so at least you get a little familiar with your book so uh if you open the first chapter and on the first page at the bottom there are six characteristics and then on the second page there is kleshagni been described with the title as relief from material desires all right and that subject matter goes uh up to the next two page and after two pages if you see you see a heading krishna consciousness is all auspicious after two or three pages are you able to find it please go through the book otherwise when you have to read later on you will find it difficult okay so got it so krishna kanch is all auspicious so while we are doing discussion you can write down the titles this is shubhadha like this fine and how shila rupa goswami defines shubhadha is what i have shown you in the presentation these are the four attributes to to be called as all auspiciousness and propa describes this in the next series of paragraphs so let's take a look at it krishna consciousness is all auspiciousness for this we'll refer to from the book so you get some kind of a clarity how propa have described this in the first paragraph in the under that heading if you see propa talks about third line at the present moment groups of people are engaged in welfare activities found it somebody all right any online devotee found it so let's one of you read it those who found it at the present moment groups of people are engaged in welfare activities in terms of society community or nation there is even an attempt in the form of the united nations for world health activity but due to the shortcomings of the limited national activities such as general mass welfare program for the whole world is not practically possible the krishna conscious movement however is so nice that it can render the highest benefit to the entire human race everyone can be attracted by this movement and everyone can feel the result therefore rupa goswami and other learned scholars agree that a broad propaganda program for krishna consciousness movement of devotional service all over the world is the highest humanitarian welfare activity hari krishna can we have the slide please hari krishna so this was the first point under sarva jagatam priniyam how krishna consciousness is the highest welfare activity so propad gave one example started with a negative example of how united nations etc have not succeeded in their objective but krishna consciousness is a true united nations which brings people out of, of all different races and past now propad gives i'm actually just quoting shila rupa goswami now a shastrik example is given in the next paragraph and that is from padma purana mother shivani your hand is up read the next paragraph hare krishna tanu krishna jaye how the krishna consciousness movement can attract the attention of the whole world and how each and every man can feel pleasure in this krishna consciousness is stated in the padma purana as follows so this is a not about attracting everyone this is about compassion 
that's the point is mentioned but because propath had meant mentioned about attraction that's reason but please slide please so do what he sees how is going so compassion for everyone now shri lord prabhu swami gives a shastric reference that is of padma purana all right a person who is engaged in devotional service in full krishna consciousness is to be understood to be doing the best service to the whole world and to be pleasing everyone in the world in addition to human society he is pleasing even the trees and animals because they also become attracted by such a movement this is first shastra example now a case study how compassion for everyone is of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu walking through jharkhand forest <laughs> Practical example of this was shown by the Lord when he was traveling through the forest of Jari Khanda in central India for spreading his Sankirtan movement. The tigers, the elephants, the deer and the other wild animals joined him and were participating in their own ways by dancing and chanting Hare Krishna. So these are some of the examples which are mentioned for compassion for everyone. Now in the next paragraph, we have an example for how Krishna consciousness, we are talking all auspiciousness, such a person becomes attracted to everyone. That's the point here. Uh, furthermore, a person engaged in Krishna consciousness, wait a second, this is second. Bestows good qualities mentioned next paragraph. So, so next is bestows good qualities actually, next paragraph. So Prabhupada quotes a uh, prayer by Prahlad Maharaj. Not Prahlad, Prabhupada, Srila Rupa Goswami writes, gives a reference of Prahlad Maharaj, 5th Canto, 18th Chapter, verse number 12, Yes, Yasti Bhakti, Bhagavati Yakinchana, Sarve Gunis, Sama, you know, yeah, Harav Akhtar, like that's a verse. So that verse has been mentioned here. My dear King, persons who have unflinching faith in Krishna and are without any duplicity can develop all the good qualities of the Devatas. On account of a devotee's high greed of Krishna consciousness, even the devatas like to live with him. And therefore it can be understood that the qualities of the devatas have developed within his body. And as was, we were discussing an example of how Srila Prabhupada went to the West, introduced bhakti amongst the hippies who at that point of time were engaged in all kind of uh, sinful activities, which were the norm that day, in those days. And by the practice taking up to this uh, bhakti process of bhakti, they left all of that very easily, like that. In the next paragraph, Prabhupada talks about while those who are not in Krishna consciousness, even if they are very learned, very famous, even a celebrity and whatnot, wealthy, they cannot have any good qualities. And then in the following verse, again Prabhupada builds up on the subject matter, how uh, Krishna consciousness bestows all the good qualities. And then following uh, paragraph, Papa writes, for example, are you all able to see that? For example, all right, you have a mic, please read. For example, a Krishna conscious boy, even if he is not very well educated by the university standard, can immediately give up all illicit sex life, gambling, meat eating and intoxication. Whereas those who are not in Krishna consciousness, although very highly educated, are offered drunkards, meat eaters, sex mongers and gamblers. These are practical proofs of a Krishna conscious person becomes highly developed in good qualities, whereas a person who is not in Krishna consciousness cannot do so. We experience that even a young boy in Krishna consciousness is unattached in, to cinemas, nightclubs, naked dance shows, restaurants, liquor shops, etc. He becomes completely freed. He saves his valuable time from being extra vigently spent in the way of smoking, drinking, attending the theater and dancing. Hare Krishna. So like this, so in the first two or three paragraphs, Prabhupada have actually combined the first two qualities, compassion for everyone and it attracts everyone. Those two qualities have been combined. Then in the third paragraph, bestows good quality and from that up to the paragraph that we read until now, the discussion was about bestows good qualities. And then Prabhupada in the next paragraphs again talk about, uh, you know, now Prabhupada compares the practice of bhakti to that of yogis or other processes. And Prabhupada writes, one who is not in Krishna consciousness usually cannot sit silently even for half an hour. The yoga system teaches that if you become silent, you will realize that you are God. 
the system may be all right for metalistic person but how long will they be able to keep themselves silent the last line of the paragraph one develops the highest character by becoming a pure devotee of krishna the conclusion is that no one can truly have any good qualities if he is lacking krishna consciousness are you getting a little bit how to read now how how this is been distributed so first three qualities have been discussed and now the next and the last quality sukham bestows superior happiness if you look at a book their purport have given a title happiness in krishna consciousness this is part of uh, ausp- uh, all auspiciousness only this is not a separate heading is it clear so just to make you familiar with this therefore i kind of introduce this way of reading it and this goes on for the next two to three pages and after that comes the next quality fine we'll take a look at it let's go with the presentation i may have some one or two points mentioned and then we'll go back to it so where is my presentation yes so here so compassion for everyone popa shri rupa goswami has given a definition which means welfare activity for all the people of the world uh in, in case anyone have gone to adi keshava temple there is a pic uh, there is a drawing over there where there is a tiger keeping hands on a cow and a calf is drinking a milk from a tiger and cub is drink, milking a drink from the cow there's a picture you know tiger and the cow standing together next to each other and the calf is drinking a milk from the tiger and the cub is drinking a milk from the cow like that so there is mention that how on krishna conscious platform uh, you know you rise over the bodily consciousness like this second uh, quality which is mentioned here is uh, compassion for everyone and it attracts everyone oh why is it moving yeah like this and third is produces good qualities uh, you know proper talks about how the mundane education cannot produce good qualities because it is uh, of godless civilization you know without god consciousness there cannot be any good qualities like this you know how krishna consciousness attracts everyone there was a devotee who was giving a very interesting example uh, this was from russia and the example was such that every evening our devotees will go for high naam sankirtan and there was a local gangster you know this thug who will stand by the side of the road and you know do time pass with his other gang members so our devotees would almost every day would travel by this pathway where they will go chanting the holy names of the lord high naam sankirtan and this thug standing on the other side would mimic them to tease them whatever way he would say hari krishna what not and it is described that eventually he had an heart attack and he died and he was taken to the yamaloka for his further punishment and there yamraj yas so has this rascal and any one good thing in his life after his whole bio data was read profile was read then he was informed or yamraj was informed he did one good thing that he would imitate the chanting of the holy names of the lord only one good thing so he was asked what would you like what result would you like to reap the good or the bad he said good and he was immediately sent back back to that life and this mentioned that this individual went straight to the temple and took to the process of the holy names of the lord and it is this individual who was a gangster became a devotee later on himself told his story of how had a second chance and how i witness the efficacy of chanting like that you know it even attracts gangsters like my example interestingly all this example i have noted comes from russia only <laughs> all the very strange and unique examples <laughs> all right all right let's move on sadguna produces good qualities uh presentation please i like this so this was the thing now let's go to the next sub- uh, subject all auspiciousness should have four characteristics and in that uh, the next characteristic is uh happiness bestows uh, superior happiness so if you look in your book happiness in krishna consciousness so as i said there are three kinds of happiness what are the three types of happiness shri rupa goswami describes one happiness which comes from sense gratification second which comes from moksha liberation or brahman realization and third that which comes from devotional service and the conclusion of the subject matter is of the three the 
happiness that is derived from the practice of bhakti is said to be the highest. Why? Srila Rupa Goswami gives two reasons. First, bhakti and bhakti rasa is the only thing which is eternal. Everything else is temporary. Second, it includes the happiness from previous stages and in fact excels the pleasures found in other types of happiness. So example is given, the happiness of moksha is like a drop in an ocean of uh, bhakti ras, like that, so high, so high. So now Srila Prabhupada, to help us understand this, will give us example. And how does he give example? Let's take a look at it. Again, we'll read from the book. So first paragraph, happiness in Krishna consciousness, describe what we discussed just now. All right. And then Prabhupada begins to give, uh, Prabhupada, I mean Srila Rupa Goswami, uh, begins to give some references here. Let me just tell you what is the flow of references here. So, how devotional service offers the highest pleasure, Srila Rupa Goswami gives the reference from Tantra Shastra. Well, Lord Shiva, are you see on the paper on the page? Okay. So it is mentioned. Abhishek, if you are managing it, I can ask somebody to read. If somebody raises his hand, you can unmute them. Or else we can just unmute everyone. Hopefully, somebody would not, uh, you know, so they can. Okay, so unmute. Uh, anyone would like to read who has not read? Uh, know where are we reading from? They can read it. Okay. In the Tantra Shastra, Lord Shiva speaks to his wife, Sati, in this way. My dear wife, a person who has surrendered himself at the lotus feet of Govinda and who has thus developed pure Krishna consciousness can be very easily awarded all the perfections desired by the impersonalist and beyond this, he can enjoy the happiness achieved by the pure devotees. So Prabhupada starts with this as a reference saying that how Bhakti gives the highest happiness. And the next paragraph, Srila Prabhupada talks about the comparison of Bhakti Rasa with Mukti and uh, what you call as Bhatik Ras. So this is the subject matter. Let's take a look at the presentation. Lord Chaitanya once revealed himself to this confidential devotee, Kola Vecha Sridhar, and offered him any opulence he liked. But Sridhar informed the Lord that he did not want any opulence. Like this, we have hundreds and hundreds of examples of how Dhruva Maharaj, Lord, wanted to bless him, fulfill his desires, but he said, no, my dear Lord, I don't want what I came for here. Only what I want is, I've already achieved by having your darshan. So like there are many examples like this. So let's continue from the book. Let me see if something else is there in my... Okay, I'll be concluding here that way. So let's take a look at it. So first, if you see the next paragraph, Prabhupada first begins to talk about moksha. And he begins to find defects in those who preach about Mayavad philosophy. And Prabhupada says how it is insufficient. It has been seen that great Mayavadis, very highly educated and almost realized, may sometimes take to political activities or social welfare activities. Reason is that they actually do not derive any ultimate transcendental happiness in the impersonal understanding and therefore must come down to a material platform and take to such mundane affairs. So this is Prabhupada oftentimes would mention that how certain yogis and mystics or these individuals will go to the caves of Himalayas, perform the pursuit for long and finally they'll get bored and come back and join political party or start some social Activism, like that. Now I realized I have this all thing in the presentation. Let's put the presentation. So, there are three kinds of happiness. First, happiness from material enjoyment. Then, happiness from identification with Brahman. And then, happiness derived from Krishna consciousness. So, this is like going from negative excess. Happiness derived from material enjoyment. Which is nothing but... Uh, freedom from suffering temporarily, that is negative excess. Happiness from identification with Brahman, that is zero excess. And then the positive excess of happiness begins with happiness derived from Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada says as follows on the life of an Iskand devotee. What he says, These Krishna conscious boys and girls in 60 centers, they're living in the best houses. They're eating the best food. They're in the best consciousness. They've got the best hope. Everything best. 
the features of body is best what material happiness you want more than this they got wife children happiness home everything full so material happiness is nothing to a krishna conscious person material happiness will roll at his feet saying please take me there is no need for asking for it simply be steady and ask krishna please engage me in your service then your satisfaction will automatically come do not bother for material happiness shila purpose lecture new york it is a given further all aspirations okay let's continue our discussion from the book so this is about uh, wait a second i should have all the slides one second okay okay let's go back to presentation so what we were talking right now ha uh-huh, this is thing and this is just about all auspiciousness i guess some slides went here and there how does it happen so after describing this about mayavadis then popat talks about what happiness do the mystics get and then popat quote you know from the next paragraph until literally the next page popat is talking about mystics there are eight primary siddhis that popat quotes and then there are eight or something around secondary siddhis like ishita siddhi vashita siddhi etc etc and popat himself had experiences of it and gave example popat in one of the lecture was talking about this mystics and he said in calcutta there was a very famous naked baba and this naked baba will go and sit anywhere and if he sits nobody on earth can move him so one day this naked baba decided to go and sit right in the middle of the road main road <laughs> you know you have naked baba sitting there and this is during british time the police tried arguing with him asking him but this baba will not move jahan baith gaye wahi baith gaye so after trying all their might they decided all right if he is not listening we're going to arrest him so shila prabha says so this naked baba was arrested he was put behind the prison cell and something very interesting happened he was put behind the prison bar the previous evening and next morning this naked baba was sitting on the same spot at the same street and everyone was shocked and prabha ji said what did he do he reduced his body to a size of a needle came out of the keyhole and walked outside he was a mystic and then when the police officers saw and they understood we cannot do anything then the left naked baba they are only like this <laughs> so baba gives an example of this so in other words this uh, shri rupa goswami is talking about this mystics also you know it gives you sense of great yeah i have some potential have some capacity so it has been described when this happiness nothing in comparison uh, to what happiness one derives from bhakti baba gives another example he had a friend who m- met a yogi who was who was another friend took him to a yogi and this yogi then and there he just kind of did something with his hands and brought out an apple kashmiri apple and cut that kashmiri apple with his own hands and distributed the slices to all the guests and this man was so excited propa's friend he was so excited he said abhi charan de you would not believe what i saw this yogi from somewhere he manifested his apple he is very powerful you should come along with me this is a picture in day when he has already met bhakti siddhanta saraswati dako not like before so avichan day avashila prabha ji he responded i have no interest in such magicians because one who has taken a shelter of the greatest magician krishna who is known as yogeshwara do you think he cannot give me apple who gave the apple at the first place it is krishna and each apple has a seed that can produce hundreds and thousands of apple not only i produce hundred thousand apple each apple has a seed which holds a complete tree and that tree gives you hundreds of apples and each apple can give you hundreds of trees hundred is going to give you hundreds of apples so if i need to go and take shelter of anyone that is only question like that proper will talk about it uh, to explain the subject matter so this is what is being described here technical things you can please read out those who are little bit interested in some magic show so for them little bit is described here so why krishna conscious happiness is supreme shila prabhupad mentions in his writings over here first because bhakti rasa is eternal 
well all of these mystic perfections uh you know you are planning for moksha and sense gratification is all temporary and secondly it includes and excels the pleasure found in other types of happiness now after discussing this uh, shila rupa goswami begins to give uh references of how bhakti rasa is highest so i hope uh, you are with me on the page so where the mystic perfection discussion started go to the next page and then in the following page you will see the paragraph in the hari bhakti sudhodaya found it from there bhakti happiness decision started all right agnan prabhu please read out the references which are given by shila rupa goswami prakrishna yes we can take out the slide prabhu please read in the hari bhakti sudhoda it is stated those of you online you are able to follow up with the book you getting that's very important otherwise you'll get confused how it's been presented yes go ahead in the hari bhakti sudhoda it is stated that pralad maharaj a great devotee of the lord prayed to narsimha dev half my half lion half man incarnation as follows my dear lord i repeatedly pray unto your lotus feet that i may simply be stronger in devotional service i simply pray that my krishna consciousness may be more strong and steady because happiness derived out of krishna consciousness and devotional service is so powerful that with it one can have all the other perfections of religiousness economic development sense gratification and even the attainment of liberation from material existence so this is hari bhakti sudhodaya and then there is the next reference is also mentioned prabhupad goes a story of kola vecha shrida first reference is already mentioned right in the beginning from lord shiva so prabhupad quoted there but that comes under this section that how bhakti rasa is the highest and third example is of kola vecha shrida in the next paragraph there was a great devotee of lord chaitanya known as kola vecha shrida we already briefly spoke about it when he was asked what benediction would you want he was such a great yet he was such a unknown person when shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in the whole assembly of devotees asked to go and call kola vecha shrida nobody knew about him shri chaitanya mahaprabhu had to precisely say where to go and where would you find him like that and then he was called and then shri chaitanya mahaprabhu was i am very pleased by your devotion so please ask and kola vecha shrida was so poor so poor he only had almost one piece of cloth and even if it was torn all over the places he will tie with another knot and you know like that he will use it close he didn't had any utensils very simple humble dwelling despite having such living in such a poor condition of life he would yet contribute 50% because he will use it for worship of mother ganges like that and then such a person who was struggling for basic necessities that devotee was asked by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu who was giving his uh, you know darshan that particular past time at that time he said my dear lord i want nothing what i want is life after life i just want to serve you so baba i that is a position of pure devotee at the end of the paragraph if they are engaged if they can be engaged 24 hours each day in devotion service they do not want anything else not even the happiness of liberation or of becoming one with the supreme and to conclude this discussion shila rupa goswami gives the last quotation from narada panchratra in the next paragraph somebody would like to read any online devotee in the narada panchratra it is also said that any person who has developed even a small amount of devotional service doesn't care a fig for any kind of happiness derived from religiousness economic development sense gratification or the five kind of liberation any kind of happiness the righteousness economic development liberation or sense gratification you cannot uh, even dare to enter into the heart of a pure devotee it is stated that as the personal attendants and maid servants of a queen devotees ask hari krishna so we are discussing the characteristics among the six characteristics we are talking about the first two characteristics klesha agni shubhada and now in all in that definition of shubhada all auspiciousness the four characteristics of the four the last characteristic is supreme happiness and that supreme happiness have three things happiness derived from sense happiness from moksha and happiness from bhakti rasa and how bhakti rasa is highest is that clear so klesha agni subhada has been discussed 
Are you all with me? So because otherwise you might find something missing. Now something is missing. What is missing? Kleshagni Subhadha Moksha Laguta Krit. Moksha Laguta Krit means Laguta means Chota Ho Jana. Which means the greatness of Bhakti is such the desire for Moksha disappears. It becomes insignificant. So we, as we discussed last time, Kleshagni Subhadha manifests at Sadhana stage. Moksha Laguta Krit Sudhullabha uh, manifest at Bhava Bhakti stage and the latest two stages which we're going to talk in some time uh, manifest as Prema Bhakti stage. So now if you look at your book here, what is the next title? The Rareness of Pure Devotional Service. So which means that is Sudurlubha, right? So what happened? Moksha Lagutukrit. Where is that? So has Prabhupada not discussed that? So Prabhupada has not given a heading. I don't know who gave the headings actually. It wasn't Prabhupada the or the editors had to do it. But that subject matter of how Bhakti minimizes the need for moksha has been covered with the previous topic of Sukham, happiness. You got it? In that previous topic, there are three things were discussed. Happiness derived from sense gratification, happiness from moksha, and happiness from bhakti. So that moksha happiness, in that this moksha, lagutakrit has been discussed. Is that all clear? So if you capture it, you should not think that something has been missed. So by this time, the conclusion is only devotional service is all attractive. So the four qualities, uh, you know, all auspicious enemies, all attractive, all beneficial, can develop saintly character and can bestow superior happiness. This has been established. However, just for the sake of our reading and hearing, I would just make... Please go on the slide. We'll make one or two quotations here. We'll read from Bhagavatam a little bit. So this is just a summary of what we read. Let's recap here. Superior happiness. Devotional service is superior to sense gratification, mystic yoga, and liberation. That's what we discussed. And how is devotional service superior to other paths? Because it is eternal and includes other types of happiness. Clear? And there were references for it. How it includes automatically liberated from material world, senses are engaged in Krishna service. Evidences, we saw the evidences of Tantra Shastra, which Lord Shiva speaks to Mother Pavati, then Hari Bhakti Suhodya, where Prahlad Maharaj, the reference was given by Rupa Goswami, then also the reference of Narada Panchuratra, which we just read. And the examples, Kola Vecha Shrida, was example was given, and also attendants follow Queen B. That's in page number 14, which is, yeah, which will be coming next paragraph. You can take a look at it. Fine. Now let's talk about Moksha Laguta Krit. Derives the concept of liberation. I'm just going to quote one reference. As such, there are many references and we'll come to it in future also. Oh, Hare Krishna. Just one second, please. Uh, one second. I had fixed my slides. I'm just wondering why it didn't happen. So let's take a look at the reference. So Moksha Laguta derives a concept. Even the idea of concept of liberation is not accepted to devotees. This is from Thar Kanto Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Kapila speaking to Devhuti. I particularly choose this verse. We're going to go and look at the purport also. Purport gives a very profound purport, which I thought could be some additional reading for us on the subject matter. Please a pure devotee who is attached to the activities of devotional service and who always engages in the service of my lotus feet never desires to become one with me. Such a devotee who is unflinchingly engaged always glorifies my pastimes and activities. Hare Krishna. So, just let's go back and take a look at this beautiful purpose. Purpa speaks about different types of liberations. So, the subject matter will become a little clear. Third Canto, 25th chapter, verse number 34, spoken by Kapiladev to 
is Mother Devahuti. So, there are five kinds of liberation. One is to become one with the Supreme Lord. This is called Ekatmatam. Devotee never accepts such kind of liberation. Then there are other four liberations. First, to be promoted to the same planets as Vaikuntha. To associate personally with the Lord. To achieve the same opulence as the Lord. And to maintain the same bodily features as the Supreme Lord. And the fifth is to become one with the Lord. That is our five liberation. Pure devotee will be explained by Kapalamuni. does not aspire for any of five liberation. A great Sri Prabodhananda Saraswati, a great devotee Sri Chantana said, Kaivalyam Narakayate. The happiness of becoming one with the Supreme Lord, which is aspired for by the Mayavadis, is considered hellish. That one noise is not for pure devotees. So Prabhupada through this purport speaks and again debunks about this whole Mayavad is not only bogus, but is also extremely boring and disappointing. Those on a path of spirituality, it in, in fact, uh, you know, uh, creates a distaste in them for spirituality. Because it makes life so boring and distasteful that such individuals who may have some inclination to take to bhakti or to practice spirituality, they don't even want to practice now because they have been uh, disappointed by this Mayavad understanding. Prabhupada writes, next paragraph. Actually, the impersonalists do not merge into the existence of the Supreme Person, but into His personal body lustre. So what do you mean by merging in the Lord? They become one with the Lord, they merge into the body of the Lord. Papa says, no, actually they merge into his luster. And what is that? Effulgence emanating from his body, which is called as Brahma Jyoti, technically. That Brahma Jyoti, although not different from the personal body, that sort of oneness, however, is not accepted by a pure devotee. Why? Why devotees don't accept if they merge and become one with the light emanating from the Lord? Because the pleasure, the joy is in serving the Lord. The greatest pleasure is to serve the Lord. A devotee is always thinking about how to serve Him. And they are always designing ways and means to serve the Supreme Lord. The Mayavadis accept the, des the description of the past time of the Lord as stories. But actually they are not stories. They are historical facts. For pure devotees, it is an absolute truth. According to Mayavadis, absolute truth is impersonal, without personal existence. So how can there be any activity? The impersonalists take the activities mentioned in Srimad Bhavatam, Bhagavatam, other Vedic literatures as fictitious stories and therefore they interpret them most mischievously. They have no idea of the personality of Godhead. They unnecessarily poke their noses into the scripture and interpret it in a deceptive way in order to mislead the innocent public. What it means, a devotee would never, what do you say, misinterpret a pastime or give any, uh, you know, ref uh, any connotations or meanings to it. However, the other learned scholars in this Vedic sciences and history, those who have Mayavadi conception, they do not take them to be real because the Lord does not have a form. If there is no form, how can there be activity? Now they use the same stories for their means. How, how through the word juggling, however they feel appropriate, they will do it, whatever point they want to establish. Either it could be moral values, mundane moral values, or some other gains. The activities of Mayavad's philosophy are very dangerous to the public, as I said. And therefore, Lord Chaitanya warned us never to hear from any Mayavadi about any scripture. They will spoil the entire process. And the person hearing them will never be able to come to the path of devotional service to attain the highest perfection. Or else will be able to do after a very, very long time. It is clearly stated by Kapalamani that bhakti activities or activities in devotional service are transcendental to mukti. This is called as Panchama Purushartha. What is Purushartha? Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. This is Purushartha, Chatur Purushartha. What is Panchama Purushartha? Which is Bhakti. So like this is being described here. Uh -huh. Pure devotees worship the transcendental activities of the Lord in Vrindavan, Dwarka and Mathura. As they are narrated in Srimad Bhagavatam and other Puranas, the Mayavadi philosophers completely reject them as stories, but actually they are great and worshipable subject matters. And thus, are relishable only for devotees. This is the difference between a Mayavadi and a pure devotee. 
That's the subject matter. And that's how Hare Krishna. All right. So this was about Moksha Laguta Krit Sudullabha. Next subject matter is now in Narada Pancharatra. We have already read that. And now we come to the next quality called as Sudullabha, rarely achieved. Now, why it is mentioned it is rarely achieved? Pure devotional service is rarely achieved. That is what you will see in your book, The Rareness of Pure Devotional Service. And then there are references given from Tantra Shastra, from Srimad Bhagavatam, as well as Nadman is speaking to Yudhishthira Maharaj. So let's take a look. Pure uh, devotional service. So, a verse here. Matana Krishna Parata Svatova. Everyone. Mito Bipadye Tagraha Vritana. Mito Bipadye Tagraha Vritana. Adanta Gobe Vishatam Tamishram. Adanta Gobe Vishantam Tamishram. Punha Punaschar Vitachar Vanana. Punha Punaschar Vitachar Vanana. Because of their uncontrolled senses, persons too addicted to materialistic life make progress towards hellish conditions and repeatedly chew that which has already been chewed, their inclinations to Krishna are never aroused, either by the instructions of others, by their own efforts, or by a combination of both. Cannot be achieved by, why it is really achieved? The two reasons which Srila Rupa Goswami mentions. This is now Bhava Bhakti. So here Srila Rupa Goswami and further Jiva Goswami makes it very clear you can practice sadhana bhakti, you can make an endeavor for it. But sadhana bhakti cannot award bhava bhakti alone. Just because I am chanting 16 rounds of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, I would go to the next stage of bhava bhakti. Our acharyas do not agree with that. Uh, now this can become a little contentious subject. We can discuss it as we understand to that. So according to Jiva Goswami's commentary to the subject matter, and here also Srila Rupa Goswami says, uh, sadhana bhakti means vaiti sadhana bhakti you know we can go up to the stage of raganuga bhakti like that develop uh, more attachment attraction but go to the stage of bhava bhakti that is only a subject matter of grace not something attained by our efforts two reasons I mentioned first cannot be achieved by one's own efforts second in the preliminary phase of spiritual life there are different kinds of austerities Penances, but all such endeavors can hardly offer anyone devotional service to the Lord. Not even if one tries for it by such process for many, many thousands of worth. So it's not possible. Second, why it is Sudhulava? Because Krishna rarely awards it. It is mentioned, Krishna rarely agrees to offer a soul devotional service because by devotional service, the Lord himself becomes purchased by the devotee. So here in the six characteristics, there are three different levels of happiness are described and there are two levels of attraction. So Sudhulabha, which means at Bhava Bhakti, Krishna becomes attracted also to a devotee. Krishna begins to become attracted towards the devotee. That's the point here. Krishna really awards it. To whom it is awarded, which means now Krishna is attracted to the devotee. Therefore, this has been given. And one beautiful example, one of my uh, favorite example, you can see on the subject matter. Uh, we got to know when we went for the first Tirupati Yatra. There we heard about this sage who had actually was from North India. He traveled, came to Tirupati. And when he took the shun of Tirupati Balaji, he just could not take his eyes off. He would stand there for hours and hours together looking at Tripati Balaji. It was a time when there was no queue. It was a time when the constables would not push you. If in case some of us see, maybe we may also experience the joy of seeing Tripati Balaji. But he would stand and see like this lot for a long time. Some pujaris there and the security staff became a little suspicious. Why this man you know, looks like a beggar standing whole day, maybe he's planning to steal the jewelry, ornaments the Lord is wearing. So his visit to the temple was restricted. But he was a very, very great devotee of the Lord. And because his visit to the temple was restricted gradually, 
he would just he would just couldn't sleep he could just he would just cry all day why can't i go and take the shun of the lord it is mentioned that one night after middle night uh, after mid of the night there was a knock on his door where he was staying and he opened the door and there balaji balaji means uh, you know young boy krishna and his young boy uh, that leela balaji was standing there and he said to him i have come to play a game with you and they would spend whole night playing a chaucer kind of a game so one day like this now this baba ji didn't have to go to the temple anyways he was not allowed so every evening bala ji will come to him and they both spend the whole night playing chaucer playing a game with them each other so one night so what will happen he would play and then during the mangalarti time before the pujari will go and wake up the lord will immediately leave saying that well it's time for me to go pujari is coming to wake me up if he doesn't find me there it will be a problem then so like this lord was performing his past time one day when he left he left i believe his necklace or maybe uh, what he call as bracelet right something like that either of it over there on the table and our baba ji after bidding farewell to the lord he kind of dozed off he hasn't slept whole night and the lord went there pujari came and pujari noticed that let's say a necklace for example the most expensive necklace is missing and lord has played a trick here and what trick lord has played now the necklace is missing there is a whole hue and cry everyone is looking for it and in the meantime when our baba ji woke up in the morning he saw oh our lord forgot his necklace i don't know if it was a necklace or it was a plate in which krishna would eat maybe it was a plate in which balaji would eat something was like that uh, either of it and then baba ji went to the temple to give it you know it belongs to my lord and lord would need it like that and when he went there anyways people were having doubt on him and they said he is a thief because of worried about he will be caught therefore he has come to return it let's capture him let's inform to the king he was informed to the king and king and he went and told the king when he was called in the assembly and he 